So what we're going to have a look at today is uh, the different voltage drops across different colors of LEDs and uh, when and where you should take that into account when you're doing your uh, planning or calculations for um, your circuits and how many you're going to put in series and what you're going to power them with, etc. Uh, what we see here is uh, various different colors and they are uh, all hooked up in series so they're all going to get the same amount of current through them and I'm going to start cranking the voltage up and we'll see that green LED come on first and uh, it's basically the brightest. Um, we can also see something interesting here too. This ultraviolet LED, the camera actually picks up the ultraviolet where to my eye there's virtually nothing there and when we finally bring it up to a milliamp um, that UV uh, ultraviolet LED right here I can just barely see a kind of a very very light purple uh, very deep indigo color to it and you'll notice that they're <clears throat> kind of placed in uh, uh, the color sequence of the rainbow you got red yellow green blue ultraviolet and then we've also got a white one in here and what we're going to do is we're going to put a milliamp through this and we're going to measure the voltage across each one and we should see something interesting <clears throat> in that as we go and measure our voltages across the individual LEDs, we'll see the red one as an example has what 1.83. And as we go to the yellow one here, we'll see one point, call it nine. We go to the green guy and we see 2.4 ish. And you'll notice that the colors as as we go higher in this, um, we get higher voltage across the LEDs that are more towards the high energy end of the spectrum, which is ultraviolet. So we see that's almost three volts there with the ultraviolet, and that's only with a milliamp going through it. <clears throat> now the white one here, they come in quite a, a variety, and uh, we can see that it's about 2.7, call it 2.7 volts across that guy. Now the ultraviolet ones, or sorry, the white ones here often have an ultraviolet LED inside of them and then they have a uh, layer of phosphor in front of that and that's what the, uh, that's what you're seeing is on the, on the white on this here, uh, this guy right there, you're seeing the phosphor and then behind it is the ultraviolet. Some of them have uh, varying chemistries and uh, the voltage drop across them can vary quite, well across all LEDs can vary quite widely. So like you might have a red LED as an example, like this guy down here, and depending on how red it is, which end of the spectrum it's at for red, to your eyes and mine, it'll be red, but it can vary a a fair bit and, and voltage say across it and, and and the chemistries that are used inside of each one of these. Uh, I did not put a ultraviolet or sorry an, an infrared LED into here. Didn't have one handy and didn't bother uh, look digging too deep for an infrared one. You wouldn't have seen much anyways. Uh, it's a 150 ohm resistor in here and uh, what else? Uh, the color sensitivity of the human eye has something to do with this as well. So you can, your your eye is tip, typically tends to be more sensitive at the, in the green. Pretty much everybody's is, of course, the greenish yellowish uh, area it dr can drop off fairly steep. Your sensitivity in your eye that is can drop off fairly steeply at the red end and at the far blue or ultraviolet sort of enders. It eventually becomes nothing. Um, so this leads to a a thought that if if you're only putting say an LED uh, as an indicator, yes all you're using it for is just an indicator, you might consider using green LEDs. You can run them at a probably a much uh, lower current, especially when you're running on batteries and that sort of thing, you're trying to conserve some power. Uh, consider using a very efficient green LED and uh, again here we're only running one milliamp so I'm going to crank that down a little bit. Let's go to say half a milliamp and you can see this green one here and I'll, I'll point it actually towards the camera. I've got to point it a bit away because it's just so bright. So we're going to crank that, crank it down until that and we're watching that green one there and you can see that we're, we're 
or down way down here so if you, again if you're running off of batteries consider going green if it's just simply for an indicator and that's all you want to see just if something's on or off consider that <clears throat> and another thing about these two is that these are all clear leds that the package the plastic that they're in is all a clear plastic and what that sometimes also leads to is the led is quite directional where the the beam of light comes out of the thing is quite directional if i move this down a bit you can see that it makes a significant difference and i've only moved it a very small amount so it's really shooting that light out towards the front straight out and, and not broadly so what you may consider doing is what i've done with this green led right here it's kind of will be hard to see with the camera but i've i've taken a piece of sandpaper and i've buffed this guy up all around it so it's nowhere near as clear as it as it used to be you can kind of get a little indication right there it's just not clear it's all all roughed up and uh, if we take this guy take this this green led out these are all from the same batch and we put this green led in here we can kind of see that it's a little more spread out i can move this back and forth a little bit and we can see that you can still see it even off to the side it's still got a nice indication so you know if you're if you have an instrument or something that you want to know whether it's off or on simply or whatever it might happen to be you may consider taking a piece of fine grit sandpaper to the to the face of the led and uh, buff that up a little bit and uh, it'll give you a broader range of um, bright more if you want to call it that way and uh, and uh, again i think i mentioned uh, the ultraviolet here is far more i can barely see that suppose that, that that's an interesting thing too just what the camera picks up that i cannot see anyway that's that's it for this uh episode and uh consider subscribing and we'll talk to you later